Mindset Podcast. And now, your host, Jake Naraki. What is up, Reset Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Operation Self Reset. I am Jacob Naraki, and thank you for joining me on this episode. Actually, when you will be hearing this, I will be in Mexico. That is right. I'm actually going to be on a big family vacation. We go every three to four years and it just worked out and we're actually bringing our 10 month old child with us. So it's going to be quite the journey. We're packing our own bottled water and I know the hotel has bottled water, but you know what? Better safe than sorry. The last thing you want is a a 10 month old to be not doing um, good, you know, and then you're not going to enjoy yourself. So we're, we're getting geared up, we're packing away, and we're ready to go. So with that out of the way, <laughs> sorry to, to throw that in your face if you're still uh, stuck in a cold state or something like that, but I appreciate you guys taking the time and listening like always. And if you know somebody that could use a little self-reset in their own life, make sure to suggest Operation Self-Reset to them and spread the word of this great podcast because I believe there's some great information that is in these episodes that can really help somebody get inspired and to take action in their life. But let's dive into the quote of the day, and the quote is from Teresa, and Teresa is married to Jordan Hart, who was on episode number eight of the Operation Self-Reset podcast, and her quote goes like this. It says, people will follow those with passion. Not because they understand, but because they believe. Teresa, very good quote. She does not have the source of who said it, but somebody important must have said it because that's an awesome quote. A little update to Jordan Hart, um, who was on the uh, podcast episode number eight. He is now currently living out in Santa Monica, California, and he is chasing after his dreams, ambitions, and goals. And uh, shortly, I I plan to have him on the podcast to give us an update after his big book, uh, The Steel Rainbow. Um, You guys can go check out that book on Amazon or any Barnes & Noble all over the place. It's called Steel Rainbow. It's the guide of becoming a rock and roll superstar. So uh, let's dive into today's episode a little bit. Let's dive into what this content is all about. And it's about being ballsy. Uh, we're speaking with Melissa. She is from Iowa. She has an amazing story. And I once you hear her voice and once you hear her attitude, you will get wrapped in and you really really understand why is she so successful at such a young age. I believe she's 26, 27 years old. I can't really remember offhand, but she is a powerhouse of of knowledge, just a powerhouse of uh, inspiration and motivation to get you up and to take action. So here's the interview with Melissa. We will catch you on the backside of this interview. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we have on a ballsy, gutsy woman from the Midwest. I love it because I'm from the Midwest and I usually don't talk to too many ladies that are willing to get out there and put it all on the line to chase after their dreams and to inspire others. Today we have Melissa on the line. Uh, She has two books, one called Be Ballsy and the second one, Be a Baller. Sounds crazy, sounds to the point, but once you listen to her story, you'll understand why she named those books like she did. Melissa, thanks so much for joining us today. Absolutely, Jake. Thanks for having me. Melissa, not too many people know who you are right now, but why don't you give them a background of your upbringing and the the craziness that went on your life to get you to where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up in a family of five. Uh, My parents have been married 26 years. I have two younger siblings. I'm the oldest of three. And I grew up in a town of 350 people in Iowa. (laughs) And there are not a lot of people that have, you know, the balls to sort of just go out and do it and make it happen and not regret anything in life. And I have been fortunate enough to find my passion at 22 and pursue it for the last three years. So a little bit of background. Basically, in 2004, I started in retail and I grew up the ranks very quickly, ended up becoming a store manager for Walmart at the age of 19. And, you know, I had everything. I had a brand new car for the showroom floor. I had a brand new house. I had a six-figure salary. Life was freaking awesome. And then it all came crashing down in 2008 after I got fired for doing the right thing, which I, you know, I don't regret. I called my district manager out for keeping two sets of books. And so I was without a job. Obviously, I was completely naive. I didn't save any money. So course I couldn't afford my car couldn't afford my house couldn't afford my lifestyle and I ended up with a temporary job getting minimum wage and 
life sucked. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it sucked for a lot of people in 08. And so then um, in 09, I actually ended up working for Family Dollar. I did not disclose that I was fired. And after a couple months in Iowa, you know, I realized the dynamics of Family Dollar and the dynamics of Walmart are two completely different things. It was really slow for me and I hated it. So I was like, hey, let me go to Chicago and let me be an entrepreneur. Although I had no idea what that meant. And I think a lot of people when they start a business, they're like, you know, entrepreneurship is going to be awesome. But it's a it's a really tough road. It is, yeah. So I end up going to Chicago and out of security, you know, they let me take my job with me. But when I got there, I ended up having 24 stores. And, you know, I found the roommate from hell. <laughs> end up living at a rest stop out of my car for 30 days and really just hit rock bottom mentally, physically, and emotionally. So I really didn't think I had any other choice but to quit. And I remember handing my keys and, and really just crying because I didn't want to quit. I, I didn't really know what direction I was going in. I knew that retail was sort of my life for the last six years. And, you know, what kind of qualities do you take from that and how do you even begin to start your own business and so I ended up essentially spending six days in jail for speeding um and speeding is the only thing on my record and I thought the judge was being harsh but those six days were you know the worst days and the best days of my life I really just focused on you know okay you can keep continuing going down this path you have you know a, a master's degree in clinical psychology you graduated from high school early you have you know, a huge background in retail. You've made six figures before. You have all these amazing things going for you, but yet you destroy them by, you know, just not following the law and doing simple things. So I end up getting a call from Eric, and Eric is going to sell me some awesome shakes that help you lose weight. Yes. Love them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, Eric, you know, is this really going to work? And Eric is having a breakdown on the phone. And, and he's like, you know, do my life sucks. I have five kids. We're living on the living room floor of my parents' house. I have no income, no passion. I hate my wife. I want to divorce after five years. And I'm like, yeah, like I'm going to join you, right? Right. So, because I'm already in this position myself. And I knew, like, the only money I could get was from mom and dad. And at this point, I didn't really want to ask for any money. And I knew they really didn't have any money to give because growing up in the Midwest, you have sort of these values that are instilled that you work, you know, 80 hours a week. You barely put food on the table. You barely keep a roof over your head. You know, you buy secondhand stuff. I mean, it's just sort of Midwest culture to not really want more, so to speak. I don't know. That's how you grew up, but that's definitely how I grew up. Yeah, no, that that mentality is very strong mm-hmm. in the Midwest. But we're very proud of the hard work that we put in, you know, so it's normal. You know, it, it's not, you know, like crazy, um, you know, like, oh, my gosh, that's so unique. You're putting in long hours. No, that's just the way that the Midwest, you know, townships are, you know, that, that's how, how we just make make it, you know, work and put food on the table. Exactly like you said. So I'm, I'm shaking my head in agreement exactly what's going on with you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's just normal to work 80 hours and barely have enough money to survive. <laughs> Not to mention the mortgage, the house payment, or, you know, the car payment, whatever else. But I, I was honestly not going to ask my parents for money unless it was going to work. And at this point, I knew it was definitely not going to work. But I told Eric, you know, if fitness is your passion and you just had a fallout and that's what's holding you back and you really just need to get in the gym and you need to start doing fitness classes and doing all those things that you know you should be doing so you can create the income, create the lifestyle, get the job, you know, create a community surrounding your passion. And that's going to propel you to new heights. And I knew this, but you know, I was in a similar situation with him. And so I, you know, after two and a half years now, he is a millionaire. His kids make six figures. He has a great job. He has his own gym, has his own clothing line. He's doing phenomenal. And you know, I've turned my life around as a result, and I think that really anyone can. It's a matter of how hard you're willing to work, what you're willing to do. You really have to be able to make the sacrifices and discipline yourself. I think those are two extremely important keys that are missing for a lot of wants to be entrepreneurs. Right. Before we get into the tactics behind the stories, did you know Eric prior to this, or did he just call you up randomly trying to pitch you on those shakes? Yep, 
he 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 called me up randomly using wow. Facebook. Wow. And then from there, you kind of started asking him a couple of questions back, and then he just he just broke down on you. Yeah, wow. absolutely. I mean, and we ended up having a five hour conversation. So <laughs> cool. It was crazy. Cool. So then you you basically gave him kind of a, like the insight that you had when you were in prison there for those six days, that clarity that you understood, you know what, I got to take a hold of my life. I got to, you know, start working towards success instead of working towards failure. And you kind of just laid that on him. And, and that's the, the push that he needed in his life to, to take it to that next level. Yeah, absolutely. But just to be clear, I didn't go to prison for six days for speeding. I went to jail. Oh, okay. All right, jail. Yeah. All right. Sorry. sorry. Good. Good point. Good point. Good point. First of all, how fast were you going to get put in jail? Um, okay, for six days? so it wasn't that I was like speeding extremely fast. It was that I was doing it over and over and over and not learning my oh, lesson. So okay. thirty speeding okay. tickets later. Okay. All right. All right. You, you kind of made it sound like, oh, I just got pulled over, and next thing you know, I'm in jail. I'm like, holy <laughs> Jesus, were you in a rocket ship? You know what was going on here? Um, <laughs> All right, so cool. So so you transformed Eric's life, and Eric obviously is very successful now. He has his life on track, his family, his kids. Everything is is now structured because he called up randomly you, and and, and Melissa gave him the, the information and the drive that he needed to take his life to that next level. So where did you get these tactics and, and this um, theory to help him push past the doubt that he had? Well, I mean, after six years in retail, you are working with people on a daily basis. And I have a master's degree in clinical psychology. Uh, So with that sort of background, you understand the dynamics of people. And working with people for that length of time, you just know how to communicate with them, how to, I don't really want to say sympathize, but at some point you really do have to say, okay, I get it. I, I understand your situation. But here's what you really need to do to take yourself out of that. Hmm. Did I know that's what I was doing at the time? Absolutely not. Right, right. But it obviously worked. And also, too, with that first, you know, talking to Eric, you probably just, you're open, you're passionate about it because you're going through your own struggle, you know, and you just kind of laid, you kind of pushed him in that direction. I think, especially when you don't know, you don't really, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to start, you know, private coaching people now about, you know, how to become successful in life. It was just, you heard his passion story and you're like, you know what, I want to help this guy. And you just gave him everything that you had. And obviously it worked. Yeah, it did. It did. And I was very fortunate enough to make that work. Uh, And that's really, you know, after jail, I really gravitated towards any personal development books I could get my hands on, YouTube videos, anything that was really free. Sure. And so, you know, during this whole process of sort of transforming yourself, um, others are going to be affected in the process. So it doesn't really matter if you have uh, one book um, of personal development that you've read or you've read, you know, 20,000 books. They're all pretty much the same. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And and the key is, the reason why is because repetition is key to success, but yet we don't like to see that. You know, we like to see different theories, different ideas, the way the author jazzes up the stories. You know, all the successful, you know, kind of quotes and all that stuff are really the same. You know, they're just hidden and, you know, the words are jumbled a little more or a little less uh, to give you a different flair or outlook on on what you need to do to, to become successful. So after talking to Eric, you... Did you, is that kind of when the spark, you know, the spark in your mind went off? Like, oh, I I could start helping people, you know, or, or what was your next plan after that? Yeah, that was my next plan. And really at that point I was like, all right, I am going to be paid per hour. But I realized very quickly that being paid per hour was not ideal. That was bringing me back to a job situation Uh, where now I'm selling my time instead of my value. Right. So, so then... So then did you, did you start clumping it, you know, for months at a time, you know, one payment for X amount of sessions? Um, Nope. I decided against doing sessions. Instead, I decided that I would meet with my clients as much as they want, but as little as possible. Because the reality is if we're meeting, that means that you're not getting results. But if you're on the phone, if you are doing what you need to do, then you're going to get results. And those results are going to want like that level of commitment is going to make you want to work with me even more Cool. because it is what it is. It's results. And that's what you hired me for. Right. So, um, now how long you've been doing this, you know, you know, obviously your life has turned around dramatically. Yeah. I've been doing this since June 14th of 2011. That's really, 
after one and a half years of hanging out at my parents' house, <laughs> that's really when I figured out, hey, this is this is what I need to do. Cool. And um, now you have back your, your you got a house, you got a car, you're you're not uh, you know signing up for jobs and, and trying to hide that you were fired or anything like that. You're you're your own master of your own destiny. You're truly living the entrepreneur lifestyle um, in Iowa, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I have been incredibly blessed, and you know, I went from being homeless to living in my parents' house to now living in a thirty-seven hundred square foot home with two kitchens, two living rooms, you know, five bedrooms, four and a half bathrooms. Nice. Do I really need this much space? Absolutely not. Right, right. Um, but I think it's it's more of an investment than anything else. The price was right. Okay. You know, you want to build returns on your assets, and you just make the decision. It really isn't a matter of questioning whether or not you know you want something to happen when you make that decision you stick with it sure now where did you get your your ideas and that drive and that passion um you know was it from your parents was it from a book that just sparked you and you know said you know why not like i can do this you know where did you get that uh, that mindset that shifted for you was there you know somebody you spoke to was it a book what was that one turning point and and if you wouldn't mind sharing that with us if it was necessarily one thing because I've always been driven. I've always been like, I don't know, different. Um, in high school, I graduated a year early. And then in college, I had to basically go to the president and say, can I take all of my courses in one year instead of two? And they're like, yeah, you can, but you're going to be overworked. I'm like, no, I'm not going to be. At the same time, I was working, you know, a full-time job Jeez. for Walmart. So I've always been incredibly driven. Wow. Um, my parents, have had the same job for 40 years. Right. So I can't really say that it came from them. Right. So it's just within. There, there's no rhyme or reason. You're just wired that way. I, I honestly believe that. Like, okay. I really am probably the only female I know that's as crazy as I am. Sure. Now, now the question I have for you. Now, do you believe that you can help somebody get to that state of mind, to that drive, to that passion? Or do you have to be – okay, okay. So it's not like you have to be born with it. So the people listening don't feel like, well, I'm tired all the time. You know, <laughs> I can barely, you know, stay up during class or whatever. So, so you know, and I know it too, but I just want the listeners, you know, be clear that you don't need to be born this way. You don't have to have everything in line to, to be this passionate and driven in life. You can develop these skills and mindset and stuff like that. Now let's, let's flip the, the coin here a little bit. Let's say, for example, I'm talking to you and I'm going, Melissa, like, man, you got an awesome story. You're, you're dominating life. I want to get where you are, but I, I just, I'm, I'm, I don't have that passion. I don't have that drive. I don't have that commitment like you do. Like what, what are a couple of tips that you suggest to these people to get them off of their butt and to take action? That was my tip. Oh, that- <laughs> <laughs> Great minds think alike. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, um, one of the things you really need to look at is your schedule. So what is consuming your time? Because many people will come to me and say, I don't have time for what I really want to do. But the reality is that you're already doing what you value and what you don't value, you're not doing. So if you value TV, you're likely spending hours in front of the television instead of spending hours consuming books that can actually propel you to the next level. Um, you know, if you're skipping out of sleep, that's not a good thing if you're not going to the gym. So I think you really need to analyze where you spend your time and how much time you're spending where. Right. No, I agree with you. Now, okay, that, that sounds good. So once we figure out the time schedule and we realize, okay, so I start reducing TV time, I start reducing just stuff that doesn't matter in my life. Do you start telling them to educate themselves on where they want to go? Do you have them reflect on, you know, their past to give them ideas about the future? Like, do you do? No. Okay. Okay. No, absolutely. Do not reflect on your past unless you want your past to be your future. Cool. All right. I like that. So, so then what do you tell them to, to get that? What if they come in and they don't know where to go? They, they know that they're, they're destined for something, but they have no idea. Okay, so basically a lot of people have this problem. I don't know what my passion is. Yeah, sure. So one of the first things I would say is look around the room that you're sitting in right now. So Jason can do this exercise. Why yeah, do you do this? Let's do so this. what 
is in the room that you're sitting in right now? Like, what's hanging on the wall? What's sitting by you? What kind of furniture do you have? Yeah, I'm uh, sitting at a desk. I got uh, my two computers up, my microphone, obviously talking to you. In front of me, I have my uh, post-it board with all different articles and to-do lists, um, uh, all different motivational quotes. Um, you know, on the left of me, I have a wall full of, you know, different shelves with binders, paperwork, uh, behind me is my printer, you know, a traditional office, one window, a closet, two bookshelves, um, and my wife's desk and her computer next to me. Okay. So basically you just told me that you value paperwork because what you're telling me all around <laughs> you is papers. <laughs> sure. Sure. I guess so. I love paper. What can I say? <laughs> But let's just say someone was sitting in their living room right now listening to this interview. The chances of them having family um, photos on the wall or, you know, uh, sure. pictures of, <laughs> of faith reminders and yeah. whatever else, those sort of things are what you value. And that's probably what you're passionate about because people will always talk about what they're passionate about. So if you're talking about relationships, you're passionate about that. Uh, the same is true for money, um, fitness. Whatever it is that you cannot shut up about or that you have hanging on your wall or surrounding you, that's what you value and that's what you're passionate about. Yeah, that's a good point. So you're saying put up reminders then in front of you? So I should put up pictures of what I want to achieve in life or where do I want to live or, or things like that. So when I am in here in the office, I'm identifying why I'm working towards these goals. Okay, so one of the things I tell people to do is create a list of what you want, whether it's 99 cents or $99 or whatever. Right. Um, when you create this list, make sure you carry it around with you because this list, unlike a vision board, is going to help remind you that every single action you take should be geared towards achieving that specific goal. So that list should change on a regular basis because you should be constantly looking at it, reminding yourself that every decision and every action you take should be one step closer to getting that thing that you desire. Nice. I like that. Um, personally, I've actually done that. My, my background on my screensaver, like when I turn on my iPhone, you know how you can put a picture or whatever, I actually have a list. I actually have a check of what I want later on in life. And, and it's not just because I want money, but it, it shows that to get that goal, I need to keep focus on the prize ahead, you know? So, um, and then also too, when I was uh, in debt, I put a, like a piece of paper on my steering wheel. So if I wanted like coffee or something, I'm like, no, no, I can't. Cause I, you know, owe $10,000 to this credit card, 8,000 to that credit card. So it forced me, you know, the focus on what the heck I'm doing, because chances are when you're driving somewhere, you're going to be going to the store. You're going to be getting coffee, snacks, whatever. So if you have that right in front of you, that really helped me. So you, you suggest that too, just always identifying your purpose. Like what, what are you trying to reach? Yeah, but the thing about the whole debt thing is that when you focus on the debt, you're creating debt. I don't care if you're getting out of debt <laughs> or you know getting into debt. Do not focus on the debt. Focus on what you want beyond the debt. Okay. So okay. if you want, you know, good credit, if you want a nice house, if you want a great car, if you want whatever you want, focus on that. Okay. So we're focusing only on positive things. Absolutely. You have to change the input of your mind so the output automatically changes. Okay. Okay. I like that. What, um, what are, when you talk to these clients and, and you've been doing this for a couple of years now, what besides the, you know, I don't have the time, I don't know what my passion is, what is another hurdle that people are trying to get over in their life that they just need assistance with? I'm broke. Ah, uh, sure. Okay. I hear it all the time. I don't have money for that or whatever. Uh, money is a mindset. So yeah. you have to recognize that. Right. Actually, everything is a mindset. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's what I'm trying to do in this podcast is to, uh, you know, reset your, your mindset, you know, to unlock your future. And, um, and I believe that the power of the mind is, is unbelievable. You know, I mean, we know about it, but I don't even think we even still know all, all the things that it, it can provide us with. So it's that limiting belief of saying, I don't have the money, so I can't go to this conference. I don't have the money, so I can't, you know, get these resources to enhance my life, correct? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people will say, I don't have the money, and that's just a broke mindset. That's, you know, keeping you in debt. That's keeping you from progressing forward, and it's keeping you from making the decisions you know you should be making to begin with to get the results that you truly want. Right, right. 
All right, so so after you kind of break through this mindset and clarity and, and start focusing on positive things, what are the the steps then, the, the practical steps to get yourself you know, in that direction? Is it, you know, educating yourself? Is it starting to go and meet people? What are the things that you suggest for people to to get further now towards their, their dream and their aspirations? Yeah, well, thinking positive is not enough. I mean, you can go to American Idol and think positive, but that doesn't mean you're going to win. Right. <laughs> so you have to have a plan of action. You have to have a support system and you have to have accountability. So this is why these three are important. A support system is the foundation for your growth. If you have a lawyer, a banker, you know, an asset protection manager, if you have, you know, a supportive spouse, a great friends and family to associate with, then you're setting yourself up for, um, for success. The same is true, um, you know, if you, you have to have accountability. So you have to be tracking your goals every single day. You know, you have to know what you're putting in your body. You have to know how many sales calls you're making. You have to know how many relationships you're building. All of these things you absolutely have to know because relationships are the difference between contact and contract, and that essentially is what is going to build your business, is sales. So you really should be making a plan of action, and that action plan should be something that you really want to work for but shouldn't be so overwhelming that you don't know where to start. Right. Okay. Um, I think those three components are are vital. I, I totally agree. Um, it's funny because it's very simple. It's to the point. Everybody understands it. Everybody can change those those ideas and concepts that you suggested um, to surround themselves and, and to to bring that success to, to them. And, and I think sometimes when we we sit back and we analyze things, we read the books, we're looking for that one step, that one secret sauce to really get us over the edge. But it's not. It's, it's, it's uh, numerous things that we need to implement in our life and to focus on daily. And like you said, it's the positive does not get you towards the success in the end. It's the actionable steps and being accountable and um, having those lists. Now, do you feel that everybody should start their day with writing out a list of what they should do? Uh, well, I would remove the word should from your vocabulary because okay. you should do nothing. I mean, you want to be so inspired and motivated to actually do whatever it is that you um, desire. So instead of putting into your mind that you have to or you should do something, put it in your mind that you want to do it. Because when you want to do something, you're more likely to do it. When you feel pressured like you should or you have to do it, your brain automatically rejects it. So you're never going to take the action towards this step. Awesome. But I also want to say you should recognize the difference between inspiration and motivation. A lot of people go to events thinking that they're going to be motivated. But motivation is sparked from internal. So no one can motivate you but yourself. You must understand that principle. Inspiration comes from someone standing on a stage giving you the tools, the resources, and being a thought leader or being someone who has been there and done it, they're inspiring you to take action, but they're never going to motivate you to actually do it unless that internal drive is sparked and you go ahead and make the decision to take action and get the result that you want. Awesome. That is so powerful in, in what you said, and you broke it down very, very, that, dude, that, that was great. That was great. I thank you for breaking down those two words because you're right. Uh, motivation and inspiration does get overused in different, and I think I overuse it too sometimes, you know, in, in my podcast. And, and that's something that I really need to break down and identify that I need to inspire more for you to take action or for you to be motivated so that you're able to reach your, your goals and your success. Let's talk about your two books here for a second. Um, the first one, uh, Be Ballsy. Where the, the inspiration for that book obviously came from your, your, everything that you suggest to the people that are you know, calling you weekly, monthly, whatever. Um, and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to kind of pour this all into one book. Um, actually, oh, I got it all so wrong. I went this, yeah, <laughs> <Sorry>. yeah. <laughs> Darn it. No worries, though. No worries. Um, so I actually ended up putting a dating profile online and oh. I fell in love in six weeks. And then, um, 
So when I went into this date, I was like, look, I've been on CNN, been on Forbes, you know, I'm an Evolution Magazine's top power player under 40. I, I listed all the things I've accomplished, right? Because right. I knew in the Midwest, men are intimidated by this. So I might as well just get it all on the table immediately. Right. right. <laughs> so I'm sitting in front of this guy, this guy's like, and I'm telling him, you're going to be intimidated. And he's like, no, I'm not. And I'm like, really? <laughs> What's going to make you different from any other guy I've met, right? Sure. So he basically says, I'm a rocket scientist. I'm like, you're joking. <laughs> and he's like, no, I lead a, a team of 250 engineers for one of the top aviation companies in the world. Now, my mom's worked for this company for 40 years. So, of course, I call her up and I want to verify this. Right. And he was telling the truth. So here I am. Like, you know, here I'm intimidated, right? <laughs> and <laughs> the table just suddenly turned. So I fall in love in six weeks and he says, I need to go to work abroad for four months. And I'm devastated. I'm like sitting on my living room floor crying, thinking, what am I going to do? Like, you know, I'm in love with this guy and now I'm going to have to spend the next four months apart. So immediately I pick up my laptop and I start writing a book and my coach uh, who is an eight times bestselling author with Jack Canfield. His name is Matthew Lee. He's been on these all writing books for months and months and months. And I told him I'm not interested in writing a book, not writing a book. Um, and I have no plans to write a book. So in less than 30 days, this idea literally went from paper to bookshelf. And in 56 days, I wrote both books. Both wow. came out this year. So the Evolve came out January 15th, and then The Evolve came out February 26th. Congratulations. And Yeah, thank you. Um, so Rohan, my significant other, is coming back next Wednesday, and I'm super excited. Four months is finally up. <laughs> um, but that's sort of how the book came about. I share, you know, how basically not to suck at love, success, and happiness, how love, I believe, propels you to new levels of success and happiness. I think you can be happy and successful, but I think when you add the love component, it's a whole other level. I don't know if you agree with this or not. I know you're married. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with it. Um, you know, for myself, um, you know, getting married um, actually gave me clarity on what I wanted. You know, it, it, it allowed me to focus, you know, because I was a young guy, you know, I had money, you know, I had a good job right out of high school and I was living the baller lifestyle, you know, or I thought I was, you know, I was going out, I was partying, wow. I was living it up, I was traveling, doing whatever. And it wasn't until, you know, I finally, t you know, decided to be committed to my now current wife that it gave me the clarity of what I now want to achieve as Jake Naraki, you know, as myself. And, and that was a huge turning point for myself. And, um, you know, and I, you know, whatever we can get it on. all, you know, that's a whole nother topic and stuff like that. But I understand exactly where you're coming from. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So that's sort of how the book came about. And, you know, it's just basically our story. Like I tell about every single day I laid on the line, like you can have it all, all at the same time. And you should be unashamed of that. Right. You know, you don't have to fix between love and success. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, uh, congratulations on pumping that out. I mean, writing a book is, is not easy, but especially because, oh, I mean, God. you know, you had, obviously you had the emotional drive behind it. That always helps. Um, but also too, I mean, gosh, I mean, you flew through that and then to write two of them, come on. So good job. That is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, um, I think the total is somewhere between 80,000 words, but I absolutely love writing okay. and, you know, it just came naturally, but I think it's, it's really captured like the rawest moments. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's good. And how can people check out this book? Um, it's available, um, in Amazon, Barnes and Noble, thousands of libraries and bookstores, um, on our website. It's available in Kindle, MP3, PDF, um, or paperback. Great, so. great. All options for anybody. That's that's always a yeah, absolutely. And I personally read them on the MP3 version. So nice, nice. Um, that's always good. I, I think that's always a nice touch when the author actually takes the time to read their own book because <laughs> it's their story, you know. So that's that's really cool that you did that. Um, and and the one thing that I pulled away when you were talking there for a little bit. Now it sounds like that you have a coach, correct? I do. I do. Okay. Now, do you feel that everybody should have a coach? And when did you realize that you needed somebody to 
to kind of keep you in line? You know, when, when did that turn for you? Um, I didn't. They sort of like oh. just fell into my lap. So what happened was I put a status on Facebook. I'm coming to Chicago. If any of you guys want to meet up, let me know. And I tagged like as many people as I could. Now I had over 700 connections from Chicago between LinkedIn and Facebook. Great. And so I didn't tag everyone. And the one person I didn't tag, you know, comes to me and says, let's meet up at Starbucks, 8 p.m. Thursday night. I'm like, okay, whatever. You're going to be the last a person I see before I leave. Right. We had a conversation, went back home. Um, we continued our relationship. And then I went back a second time and I needed his opinion on something. And that's really when he sold me on the power of coaching. And I do not regret for a second making that investment because that is by far the biggest asset to my company. And I think absolutely everyone should have a coach because you don't realize how pivotal that is to your business until you have one. Uh, you know, your clarity increases, your productivity increases, your sales increase, and as a result, you're much, you know, more happier, and your company is doing a hell of a lot better. I mean, you could be successful before, but that really is a key. Yeah. Now, is that because he's holding you accountable, you know, because you're meeting with him weekly? What What do you feel the, the benefits are with having a coach that really puts you over over the edge? Um, so one of the things that I feared was picking up the phone. I remember when I first got done talking with Matt, he was like, you have to pick up the phone. You have to make sales. You don't have an option. I'm like, okay. So I grabbed my phone and started making phone calls. And I remember I could literally like wring my shirt out. There was so much sweat. And I had like a fear of, I don't want to pick up the phone. Cause you know, someone could tell me no. Right. Yeah. Rejection. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's really important just to get over your fears and to understand the psychology behind why, because in your own business, you have your own sort of philosophies on why something is working and why it's not working or what you should do to fix it. And why, but when you take someone else who has been there, done that, has that sort of experience and you put them in your corner, you can accelerate your growth at an extremely rapid pace and cut years off the learning curve. And I think that's incredibly important. Great. Um, what do you tell people now that are your clients that go, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I have no self confidence. You know, I, I, I don't want to call anybody. I, I feel, you know, silly in front of people. You know, I, I'm, I, I'm awkward. All that stuff. What do you, what do you tell them to help uh, get out of that funk? Well, one of the most important keys is to serve out of love and to really communicate your message with clarity. Uh. I think a lot of people go into the sales world or pick up the phone with the expectation of calling a decision maker and feeling all the benefits and value that the, the decision maker will have by purchasing a product or service. The reality is that you want to come from a place of love and serve them in the best way possible by answering a couple questions. What value can you add to them and how is that impact or how is that value going to impact their organization? When that value does impact their organization, how much money is that going to make them? And then you can step back and say, okay, this is the amount of money, the value that I'm bringing to the table is going to make you, and this is why I'm worth what I'm worth. So you eliminate the fear altogether by being genuine and being authentic. I mean, leaders don't want you to come to them, you know, can I get an autograph? You know, I'm scared of the decision maker. You know, I'm not confident in my ability to get the deal closed. And all that, they want you to come with the utmost confidence and realize that the value you're bringing is going to impact their organization positively and add more to the bottom line. Awesome. Awesome. So true. Um, Melissa, this truly has been an inspiring podcast interview. Um, I, I knew about you briefly before inviting you on, and I'm so um, honored to have you on. I mean, the things you've accomplished in your life, um, not only from early on, but even just the books and, and the clarity that you have. And the great thing is, is that you are sharing this um, with other people. Um, how can people get in contact with you about possibly coaching or looking to see what you have to offer? Yeah. So I have two websites, bbaldi.tv and briellaarion.com. So that's B-R-I-E-L-L-A-A-R-I-O-N.com. Or just pick up the phone and call me, 563-419-1101. Yes. And I would meet people with this. You know, when you surround yourself with amazing people, it's not about 
who is surrounding you that's making an impact. So if you are a millionaire and you sit at a table with broke people, you're not going to become broke unless you quit taking action. Just the same as if you are a broke person and sit at a table with millionaires, you're not going to become a millionaire unless you start taking action. So this whole conception of you are the five people you surround yourself with is completely false. But don't you agree, though, that you should hang out with people that are where you want to be? Only if you're willing to do whatever it takes to get where they are. Uh, There you go. There you go. That's good. That's a good tidbit because, right, I mean, what? how great is it to hang out with millionaires? Yeah, it's great. You can hang out and they can, you can hear their stories. But if you're not willing to take action, what's the point? You're, you're still just going to be who you are. Um, geez, man, you got you got good clarity, good insight. I like this. I'm going to have to use that phone number one of these days. <laughs> Give you a call. Um, <laughs> Melissa, what does a self-reset mean to you? Self-reset is all about taking the action you know that you should be taking to achieve the goals that you truly want to achieve. And that is whatever it is that you want. So don't base anything on what another person wants for you. Uh, Make a decision about where you want to go with your life. Make an action plan and then do whatever it takes. If that means investing in a coach, if that means going to classes, if that means, you know, just investing in yourself at the highest levels, then do that. That's self-reset, you know. Put something different into your mind to get something different out of your life. Ooh, that's a good tagline. I might have to steal that from you. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome, awesome. Melissa, thank you so much. I'll put all of the the links, uh, where to get the book, um, about the book, all in the show notes. Uh, Melissa, truly, it's been an honor. I, I greatly appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks, Jake, for having me. See, what do you guys think? I over-delivered, didn't I? Melissa knocked it out of the park. Intensity, clarity, to the point, and she broke down the traditional barriers that I probably have been speaking about on this podcast time and time again. You know, the, the one that I love is surrounding yourself with, you know, you know the five, you're the sum of the five average, average people you hang out with. Well, if you surround yourself with millionaires or poor people, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to become a millionaire or poor people. It depends if you take action in those directions. It was just really clear and, and awesome, you know. So I hope, and I, I know you got some value out of that. I know that you got inspired to take action. Um, Melissa is a powerhouse of wealth. wealth. Check out her books. Um, personally, I have not read them yet, but they are on the to-do list. And um, I, I can't wait to talk to her again. So Melissa, if you're listening, thank you. Very good, very good interview. So with that out of the way, if you guys have any questions, if you want to get in contact with me, send an email to ask at osreset.com. Also too, I am doing a survey. And if you complete the survey, there's only four questions. Um, I will be putting your name in a drawing for one of eight gifts. Uh, The gifts include two $25 gift cards, Visa gift cards. Um, I will be giving away five hard-covered books two audible.com gift cards and a free 15 minute Skype session with myself. Um, it would be greatly appreciated. It would help me give direction to this podcast. If you like this podcast, if you enjoy this content, if you enjoy my voice and if you enjoy listening week after week, please fill it out. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Each person that does fill out the survey, I will be sending you a nice little thank you via email. Also, too, if you want a gift, it's 100% free shipping um, and handling. There's no hidden fees or any craziness like that. So um, it's just a thank you for taking part of the survey. The best place to take the survey is on the website. Go to osreset.com forward slash survey and it will lead you right there on the page you don't have to click any additional links or anything like that again it's osreset.com forward slash survey and make sure to fill out the fifth question which is your email address because i don't ask for an email anywhere on that form and the only way to send you the prizes is to get your email address so thank you very very much so that's it for today I hope you guys make it a great week. Stay tuned for the Motivational Minute that comes out next week, Monday, uh, to get yourself back on track to start the week in the right 
foot. Um, and, and that's all I have for you guys. So I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you, honestly, from the bottom of my heart for being a, a member of the Operation Self Reset community. And if you want to get more information about Operation Self Reset and find out more ways to improve your life, head on over to osreset.com. And on there, there's a little opt-in for an email address. If you fill it out, you'll be receiving some great updates and stuff like that. And for the people that is currently on the email list, I am kind of reformatting it to make it more streamlined and to make it more concise. Because the last thing, I I realize I hate receiving emails from people that are so long, so ridiculous. I scan through it real quick. I flip my thumb over it and it keeps on scanning and scanning and scanning and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And I'm like, forget it, I just delete it, you know? So I want it to be precise, I want it to be complete, I want it to be actionable, and I want to help you the best that I can. So with that being said, you guys freaking rock. That's right, you do. You're awesome, you're the greatest, you're worthy, and you are are the best person that I know. Considering you're not in the same room with me, I, I still think you're an A-OK person. So take care, guys. We will catch you next time on the Operation Self-Reset Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Operation Self Reset Podcast. Find out more ways to reset at www.osreset.com.